This is a comprehensive Udyr guide. Let's start with mastery pages. I have two separate pages that I go. One is general purpose and the other is inspired by a dude called Phantom Rising. He takes advantage of the power of Thunderlords. Note this may be a flavor of the month page which is why I included a default option. In addition, I will explain why I pick what I pick. Let's start at the standard default page. It's 18-12-0. Fury. Attack speed is more beneficial over the ability power. Feast. More damage. What's not to love? Natural talent. Raw stats over a bit of sustain. Bounty hunter. Getting a kill on each enemy on most playstyles with a deer isn't unheard of. Even if you can only get a couple, it's still a pretty big boost in damage. The other pick is certainly a viable option since you'll be bursting damage right after a stun. It's really just a matter of preference and playstyle. Piercing Thoughts You may think going for the AD penetration is obvious, but typically we'll be using the Flame Stance which is mostly magic damage. If you plan on going Tiger Deer, feel free to take the former. Fervor of Battle We will be auto attacking quickly in a short duration of time so this fits best. The other options require a chunk of bonus AD or a critical chance, both of which we don't build. Wanderer. We actively want movement speed, especially when compared to the minimal amount of stats otherwise given. Runic Affinity. The red and blue buffs will last even longer. It's always helpful as we utilize both. The other options aren't super viable for us. Very quickly, Udyr doesn't need HP sustain, and we'll be ganking a lot so we'll be near teammates quite often. Meditation. At pretty much every stage of the game, mana can be a problem. Helping alleviate is a pretty big plus. In regards to the extra damage versus low health targets, if we have them at that point, we are pretty much winning or going to win, so it may not be necessary. And finally, dangerous game. In hectic bloodbath teamfights, this can be a lifesaver. The other option is for supports. Now this is the Phantom Rising inspired mastery page. Uh, this first part is pretty similar to the, the other one. Uh, Fury, attack speed over ability power, double edged sword, more damage, uh, we already get pretty tanky in a typical build. Natural talent, raw stats over miscellaneous sustain. Bounty hunter, possible 5% damage increase over the occasional 2.5. Wanderer, crucial movement speed over minor damage boost versus minions. Runic affinity, we want those buffs to last as long as possible. Meditation, more MP over time instead of winning when you're winning buff. And uh, dangerous game. Simply put, bandits for supports. Otherwise, the D's for us. Now this is where it we go into the cunning tree. It's uh, intelligence, spam abilities. You can absolutely take the other option for more magic penetration. It's more of a stylistic choice again. And then Thunder Lord's decree. It is currently overpowered compared to any other choice. Don't 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 think about it. Just just take it. But keep in mind that this is patch dependent. Uh, it, Riot has said that they're not going to nerf this, but they may buff like Fervor of Battle so much that you would want to go Fervor of Battle. So just keep that in mind. Uh, essential information, uh, just a standard attack damage page will do just fine for most. Runes. Ideally you want a mix of attack speed and cooldown reduction. So uh, the pages I use is 9 marks of attack speed, 9 seals of armor, 6 glyphs of cooldown reduction, 3 glyphs of magic resist, and 3 quints of attack speed. Feel free to switch out the quints for movement speed instead. Although the page list is what I use for pretty much all my junglers, therefore it is a multi-purpose page for playing, you know, lots of characters. But if you're maining Udyr, you definitely want the movement speed quints. If you're really strapped for IP, you can go for a standard just attack damage page, but you'll you'll be at a pretty distinct disadvantage, especially if you go into a mirror matchup. As a real quick explanation, uh, it's fairly obvious, but the gist of the reasoning is is that you want to go fast, whether it be moving from camp to camp or bursting someone down with auto attacks or abilities. As football coaches everywhere have said, if you're going to do it wrong, do it fast. Central information, attack speed. Level up path. There are two distinct ways to go about it. The first is called Tiger Udir, or, or just Tiger for short. The other, much more popular version is referred to as Phoenix Udir, Flame Deer, or the Trick 2G inspired God Deer. If you have read up or played Udir before, you can guess what these two styles entail. Tiger Udir takes and maxes Q, the Tiger Stance first, followed either by E, Bear Stance, or W, Turtle Stance. Phoenix Udir opts for the opposite. Instead of Q, you take and max R, Phoenix Stance first, again followed by either E or W. 
Regarding which you should go is determined by what kind of playstyle you are more interested in. I will go over both in the attached general playstyle soon. I've been intentionally vague about the second and third take max abilities are. The reasoning is is because it's totally up to each individual player. Generally, Tiger Stancers max E, the bear stance, for greater stickiness and damage. Phoenix Stancers usually max W, the turtle stance, for increased stickiness. As a newbie, just stick to W, the turtle stance, to stay alive. Just remember to spam it as needed, don't forget about it, and just use your damaging abilities in combat. Essential Information Always take a damaging ability Q or R first. Then, always take W for a second base level tankiness, and take E third for base level chasing crowd control and, you know, gank potential. And finally, put a single point in your last ability around level 5 or 6, then don't level it up again until you absolutely have to. But of course, there are exceptions. Item Build For the junglers, take a hunter's talisman for the mana regen, either a potion or refillable potion for your sustain. Typically, I don't feel the need for mid to late game sustain, so a fillable might not be totally necessary. Of course, take a war totem. And feel free to switch out or take a sweeper, but again, it's not totally necessary. As soon as you get to about 450 gold back for your first jungle item, yes, even before you get both buffs, this will let you grab your specialized smite plus additional gold per camp. As to which smite you go for is to each their own. I like to have lots of vision on the board, so I take Tracker's Knife. Many take Stalkers for the increased stickiness, and, and others take Skirmishers for better dueling. It completely depends on your playstyle. The same somewhat applies to the enchantment. If you go for Flame Udir, you probably want either the Devourer for immense mid-game damage, or maybe you want Cinder Hulk for general tankiness. Tiger Udirs will probably want Warrior for the incredible attack damage boost. It's not crazy to go for Runic Echoes, but that's something more advanced of players can decide for themselves. The mana regen and movement speed is pretty great, but the ability power boost isn't super helpful. The boot selection is unfortunately patch dependent at the moment. Because of the huge nerfs to other boots like Mercury Treads and the buff to Swifties, you might as well just go Swiftness Boots. Ionian Boots of Lucidity are also a great option for spamming abilities. While it's not recommended, you can still go for Merc Treads or Ninja Tabai if the enemy team is overflowing in ability power or attack damage. Don't take any of the other options like Berserker's Greaves, they are completely unnecessary for most, if not all, Udyr builds. Enchant with Alacrity for increased movement speed. Consider Fuhrer for chasing power, however typically we fill that need with Phage from Black Cleaver or Trinity Force. Distortion is also a solid option for increased summoner spell usage effectiveness, but since we are taking Smite we actually only get half effectiveness. Essential Information Stalker's Blade, Warrior, Enchant with Alacrity Swiftness Boots. By this point in the game, consider switching to Sweeping Lens and make sure to pick up a pink ward and place it on the map. Also, the build discrepancies and exceptions pretty much end here. For the rest, you pretty much pick up the same few items and the others are situational. Offensive Options Iceborne Gauntlet Increased stickiness and utility. Gives miscellaneous stats. A nice general use item that fits into most builds. Don't take with Trinity Force since both build out of Sheen. Trinity Force, the quintessential tons of damage and utility item. It's a little bit of everything but takes an enormous amount of gold to build. It fits into most builds. Don't take with Iceborne since both build out of Sheen. And don't take with Black Cleaver since both build out of Phage. Queen Sue's Rage Blade, a fairly new addition to my build list. It got huge buffs in a recent patch. Has lots of mixed damage in addition to a possible AoE splash. Take with most builds, it's immensely helpful in team fights. Blade of the Rune King, a classic weapon but not entirely necessary here. This is more for dueling and chasing with a bit of sustain thrown in. Black Cleaver, a damage and defensive item. Don't take with Trinity Force since both build out of Phage. Essential information, take Gwinsos and a Phage slash Sheen item. Defensive options, Dead Man's Plate, it's a great item for general purpose, good armor and HP stats plus movement speed and stickiness. Spirit Visage, a good general purpose item, bit of everything, great for tank builds due to the synergy with Turtle Stance Life Regen. Banshee's Vell, only take this versus heavy AP. Randuin's Omen, tons of armor and HP, anti-attack damage carry item. Frozen Heart, also an anti-attack damage carry item, has lots of cooldown reduction and helps with your mana cost. Essential information, I would take Dead Man's Plate and Frozen Heart in most games. The general playstyles. We'll start with the Jungle Menace. This falls right in line with a Devourer build. 
Take the flame level up path and just farm for days. Times to aim for. Get the devourer enchant by around 8 minutes. Then you should be sated by around the 18 minute mark. Regular jungle camps give you 1 stack. Scuttles gives you 2. And dragon gives a whopping 5. Make sure to take each as quickly as possible. But only after you have the devourer enchant. Your stacks won't count before then. Try not to worry about ganking for your lanes unless it's immediately obvious you can get a guaranteed kill. Don't push the turret after. Generally, just don't waste your time. Just stack. Your teammates may flame you for ignoring them. Retorts by flaming the enemy into the ground with your stupidly powerful damage. Control vision, take all dragons and keep the enemy jungler confined to their jungle. For a riskier but higher damage tactic, Level up R first as you normally would, then take Q second, and max E third. Max R and E as usual, then the Q. This eliminates your W, which is your damage soak. But you know what they say, a good offense is a good offense. In a similar vein, start camps by queuing the little minion, then attacking the big minion, then follow up with the activation of your flames. This raises your overall damage level. Take Guinsu's Rage Blade and fill the rest of your items with straight defense. Devour and Guinsu's is all the damage you need. Any more and becomes less efficient. More advanced players should know and others note that you can solo Baron at a certain point. I personally haven't timed it because I don't typically care to try, nor do games last long enough. But a level 18 and a full build should be rather safe. Be sure to sweep or pink near and in the pit to avoid being caught mid Baron. You can lose both your life and the Baron to the enemy team, which can make your team lose the game. Soloing is risky, but may be necessary if your team is crap. Essential information, stack the Devourer and become a monster. The Garbage Man. By this name saying, you can probably guess what your role is. You need to carry the garbage, which is your team. This build takes the Tiger Stance Max and Warrior Enchant. The goal is to gank as many times as possible for kills on turrets. Snowball your team, give them kills. You should spend more time in lanes pushing and killing than your own jungle. Get the enemy raging like, camp more and the like, then gig them more. Right after a kill in lane, assuming you're not already dead or dying, push the turret and hopefully destroy it in one go. Of course, be wary of roaming enemies. Set up a ward in the river and be mindful of an escape route. With the absolutely necessary trinity force, you should be able to take objectives quite easily and escape. You can split push, but it's a little bit more difficult without the flame max to clear waves. Typically stay with your team and just seize turrets. Your damage will be pretty high off the charts as well. For the item build, this playstyle is pretty dependent on the game at hand. I like a tracker's knife with warrior's enchant followed by swifty boots for alacrity. Take a trinity force and fill with defensive items like frozen heart for armor, mana, and reduced cooldowns. Essential information, warrior's enchant, gank a lot, take turrets. The Unmovable Object This one's pretty simple, you're just a utility tank. I don't go for this build often, but it is an option. Take a Stalker's Blade for the slow, or Tracker's for vision, and a Cinder Hulk enchant. Build Iceborne as soon as possible and follow up with defensive items, again, like Frozen Heart. If you don't get Trackers, then get a Sightstone. Make sure to switch out the Warding Totem for a Sweeper if you do this. Go for the Flame Udyr level up path. Essential information, your role is to stay with your team, provide vision, be a tank, and stun people. If you have a hyper carry like Lucian or Tristana, stay on top of them for protection. You're not the one causing havoc in the back lane this time. You're a protector. Protect. The Trick 2G Inspired God Deer. I won't touch on this one too much since you can just watch the hundreds of hours of guides Trick has, but I want to touch on it for just a moment. In essence, he is pretty much everything I mentioned above with emphasis on taking and pushing turrets. He split bushes with the flame and then builds stalkers in the cinder hole. He's tanky as hell, but still does a lot of damage. Notably, it's not the true God Deer, the original abuse of the old Pharaoh Flare. Devourer, I guess, doesn't fill the same shoes. Top lane. I will not be covering much of Top Udyr since I don't play it at all. His mana costs are so immense that it makes it difficult to stay in lane long, and even more difficult to catch CS or win lane. If you're Udyr main, you can certainly make it work, for, but for the purpose of the guide, just don't do it. If you absolutely must top lane Udyr, here are a few tips I've picked up. Take and max Tiger Stance with a secondary max of Turtle. Grab either a Doran's item or Cloth Armor and just try to catch farm early. Don't fight if you don't have to. Not even to harass. If the enemy looks to engage, throw it in Turtle to prepare. Then follow up with a couple autos of Tiger. 
as they, or you, run away, stun with the bear stance, and quickly follow up with Tiger again. But as you'll soon learn, this rotation of abilities will sap your mana pool incredibly quickly. If you do it right even once, the enemy will just back off. Don't spend your mana on clearing waves unless you have to. If the enemy team notices you have no mana, they will definitely engage regardless of previous trades. Follow a similar build to the jungle path, and then late game fall into a split push playstyle. Keep pressure up all game. If you want more tips for gameplay, make sure to check out Trig 2G. He's the one who's pretty much taught me everything I know about Udyr. Essential information, don't trade, farm, and split push. And finally, we're just going to get to a few miscellaneous tips. When using Flame Udyr, keep an internal count of auto attacks. Activate Flame Stance, Flame, 1, 2, 3, Flame, Switch Abilities. Auto Attack, Auto Attack, Flame, 1, 2, 3, Flame, Switch Abilities. This is maximum efficiency. Animation cancel by activating abilities as soon as the damage registers on whatever you're hitting. When using the flame, aim the AoE attack at what you want to burn. For example, with split pushing, you need the damage to hit the minion wave and not off into the distance. It's a bit tricky to aim since you need to physically point your body, but it's a valuable technique. Early game jungling. Put a point in your damaging ability, immediately at base, and then use it. Then, as your first jungle camp spawns, auto attack once. Then use the damaging ability again for maximum efficiency. The camp clearing path is golems, red buff, raptors, back, wolves, blue buff, then gromp. What do you do after depends on your chosen playstyle. Going mid game, menace devourer, just keep farming. Going tiger, udir, gank king, head to a lane and make something work. Essential information, one, two, three, flame. Aim carefully, standard jungle clear. Udyr is one of the most powerful duelist bruisers in the entire game. If you're playing him, you feel like a, like a god. If you're playing against him, you think he's just a trick to want to be. But it all boils down to this. Turtle stance the hate. Make yourself unbearable. Strike like a tiger and rise like a phoenix.